Hey everyone, this is Chris with TrackMyEV.com and today I wanted to give you a quick rundown of how the Model 3 cooling system works and some modifications that we've done to it to improve the cooling capabilities. So a lot of people don't know that uh, Model 3s um, and all Teslas, a lot of EVs, they have coolant, they have oil in the drive units, um, so it's really not that much different from an internal, internal combustion engine. The main difference is that, you know, we're running at relatively low temperatures in comparison. So, you know, the drive units, the oil temperatures get, you know, in the low 200s, whereas in, in ice, you could be getting close to 300. Uh, the main difference is in the battery pack. So we usually want to stay under about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you know, max is probably about 140. Obviously, that's considerably lower than coolant temperatures. And in ice, you're probably looking more about 200, 225. So, you know, what has Tesla done to manage that? Well, as far as cooling the battery pack is concerned, there's actually not a lot going on. So you have the AC compressor that runs through a condenser, and pretty much what that does is it extracts, extracts heat out of the cooling system loop. So there's effectively two loops. You have your battery loop, um, and you have your powertrain loop. So the powertrain loop obviously runs through your drive units, um, and it runs through some other stuff as well. Um, most of the coolant is going through that battery loop, though. So that is different in the 2021 when they changed the heat pump style. Um, they kind of condensed it down into one, um, you know, condenser or radiator. Whereas in the older Model 3s, it was actually two separate ones. So basically we have a small radiator from the factory for the powertrain cooling loop. And that's going to cool the coolant that goes through the front and rear drive units. So what we've done there is we've upgraded it to a larger unit. And on the drive unit oil side of things, we've put oil coolers in. So from the factory, you know, you've got an oil pump, you've got an oil filter, you've got a couple liters of oil in there, um, but there's no real cooling going on besides the interaction between the oil and the coolant. Um, so what we've done is we've added external oil coolers, and that obviously gives us significantly more capacity. We're able to flow, you know, quite a large volume of air through there to pull heat out of those and you know, act as heat exchangers. And so what we ended up doing next is on the battery cooling loop, we actually added a radiator where one previously did not exist. So, you know, before again, like I was saying, you only had the AC compressor to cool down the battery. And, you know, when you're on track, you're generating a lot of heat. You're drawing a really high amount of amperage, right? So obviously that's gonna result in your battery temperatures rising pretty quickly. So, you know, you probably get about five laps out there, you know, 12 minutes was kind of my average before you were hitting that about 50 degrees Celsius range, which is about its maximum. So what we've done is we've added this big radiator into this loop um, with its own fan, and we were able to drop considerably off of those, of those radiator temperatures. As a test, what we did is we raised the battery coolant temperatures to about 50 degrees Celsius on a supercharger. Then we put the car in track mode, and we turned on the cooling fan for this new radiator and we were able to drop it down to 26 degrees celsius in about 10 minutes so you know it's a pretty significant difference from stock so let me uh, show you guys what we got and we'll check it out all right so here's what the front of my model 3 looks like at this point so obviously as you can see the front is gone um oh, there's no place for it at this point so pretty much what we did is behind this radiator here we replaced the factory powertrain loop radiator, but maintained the shroud. So effectively, air comes in through the front here. Um, there's little louvers that are currently closed, but when they're open, we have air passing through the new larger radiator um, for the powertrain loop, as well as the AC condenser. So you've got your compressor right about here. Uh, this AC compressor can spin up to pretty high RPMs. Um, you know, it is a fairly effective, you know, heat exchanger. And if you're not going on the track, it's more than enough, you know, for normal driving. Uh, but obviously we need more capacity than that. So the powertrain radiator that we added in, it has about six times the capacity of the stock radiator. So what this did is it dropped our drivetrain, drive unit, uh, inverter temperatures pretty, pretty significantly. Um, there was a large drop off from stock to, you know, adding this, this radiator. So... We saw that big drop off, but the oil temperatures were still high. The stator temperatures were still pretty high. Rotor temperatures were high. Um, and obviously that's all bad, right? And when you have a drive unit, if it's a permanent magnet motor, you also got to be pretty cautious of the magnet temperatures. 
So, you know, this is all fairly well limited by the electronics in the car. So there's really no risk of hurting anything from the factory, but obviously you end up exceeding those temperatures fairly quickly. So what we did is we added oil coolers and what you can see right here behind this bumper is an oil cooler. So that actually integrates directly into the drive unit's existing oil. That allows us to add more oil into you know, the system so you have more fluid to exchange with, you have direct airflow coming through, um, you know, and you're able to take out a pretty significant amount of heat from that oil. And we've done the same thing in the rear. It's a little difficult to see, but we got another oil cooler for the rear motor right here. Um, keep in mind, this isn't a finished product, so to speak, at this point. Um, you know, we can put that lower fascia trim back on and then just make a little notch over here so it's not <laughs> so in your face. Um, and we're working on some inlets for the front as well, um, just to create some better ducting. And on the passenger side, we've got a three inch hose right now that's feeding some air from the front bumper through this radiator. And this radiator right here is for the battery. So basically the battery return line uh, normally would just go up straight into your coolant bottle right here. And then it would go through this chiller right here, um, which basically takes the heat out from the condenser and cools down your, your battery loop right here. So what we did is we've tapped into that. We put this giant radiator in between, um, and that's what allowed us to, you know, be able to see some pretty significant gains in regard to battery temperature. And it's got its own fan um, and a controller for the fan right here. Finally, we've made some modifications inside the penthouse of the battery pack. Um, I can't really release the details on that quite yet, but I think that is really going to be the final part of this solution. Um, you know, we're going to play with it to figure out exactly you know, what's necessary and what's probably a little bit overkill from what we've done so far. Um, but ultimately, the goal was to basically reduce temperatures as much as possible, and then from there, figure out where we can, you know, kind of lay back a little bit um, so that you don't have a giant radiator in the front of your car. All right, so here's the cooling system in action, so to speak. So we're cooling air from the front bumper through this little cooler. That's going to cool our front drive unit. We're pulling air through this radiator here, which is going to cool down our uh, battery. And then through here, we're pulling air cool down both the battery pack and the power train cooling loop. And back here on the rear bumper, we're pulling air this heat exchanger to cool down the rear drive unit. All right, so currently uh, a lot of this is controlled manually, and what we're working on doing is basically setting the heated seats up as uh, controllers for the fans. Um, you know, you can either do that having the front ones, or if you wanted to, we could even set it up so that you have the rear ones here. Um, so, you know, there's a few different options available for that. Um, another cool thing that Mountain Pass Performance came up with is basically the ability to uh, force the cooling system into, you know, kind of like an overdrive mode, um, which you can do while charging the car, uh, which normally, even with track mode, you can't activate it while you're charging. So pretty much all we have to do to do that is put it into creep, um, and that will get kick the cooling system on and start, you know, bringing all your, all your temperatures down. Um, so it's really important when you're tracking an EV to do a lot of pre-cooling. If you don't pre-cool, there's a good chance that you're going to overheat quicker than you, than you'd hoped for. Um, so you can see right now our powertrain, which is on the right side here is actually cold. Um, and our battery is very close to being cold. Um, you know, so we're able to monitor these, these values in real time, which is really nice. Um, you know, and that way, while we're out on the track, um, you know, we can see what kind of changes we're, we're making with these cooling modifications. And then obviously they review the data, the data later to see mathematically, okay, you know, over X amount of time, um, this is how much our temperatures were increasing before, and this is how much they're increasing now. 
Um, so we hope the, to have basically a full solution um, ready to go shortly. Um, we're going to be running the one lap of America this year, um, as well as the ultimate track car challenge. So we got a busy year in front of us, um, but I think we are well prepared.